Every airman has a story. One of courage and valor, or one of self-discovery and freedom. But this journey began nearly 6,600 miles away, in a small village in Egypt called Um al Kasir, where now Airman First Class Yor Shrizaki was born. In Asia, I grew up in a small village, in a small school, small church, small, small everything. This village, thousands of miles away, would actually become the place that Zaki would get his first glimpse of America. I had like I had the American dreams since I was like so young. Usually, I, I watched like American channels. I was watching like uh, American movies. I would, I love the TV shows. I like like Friends, Die Hard, the movies. You hang in there. All the American news and politics, economy, everything. I, I was a big fan of like how is the freedom and democracy. Why, why, why I can't live this life one day? So the teenager applied for a program ran by the U.S. State Department called the Diversity Visa Program. When Zaki didn't initially hear back, he persisted in school, going to college for accounting, computer science, then education. Uh, in Egypt, it's normal to do two or three jobs. So I was working in the morning as a teacher, and in the afternoon I was uh, working as a pharmacy technician. My school even didn't have a computer. <laughs> I was pretending like there is a computer. He applied year after year for more than 12 years, and in 2015, a friend with letter in hand knocked at his door. The person who filled out the application for me, he came by my house at 3 o'clock and told me, hey, congratulations, you're going to America, you won the, the visa. I felt like my dream become true. Oh, wow, this is gonna change my whole life. But moving around the world to pursue his American dream was bittersweet. Being the oldest son meant he was the support system for the family, support that was now leaving. So you're like, an, you're like, you're like the backbone of, of the family. It's like they lost their support. Nevertheless, Zaki moved his pregnant wife and young daughter to the town of Niceville, Florida. But Zaki soon realized that simply arriving in America did not necessarily equal the American dream. Because when you, when you come here and you don't know language, you don't know rules, you don't know anything, you don't have money, you don't have a place, you, you very much don't have anything. So Zaki decided to do something that only 1% of Americans do, serve. He joined the U.S. Air Force Reserve and serves as a flight services technician in the 908th Air Medical Evacuation Squadron at Maxwell Air Force Base. Most of us, you know, who have lived here all of our life, uh, we, we take on this mantle of service. He takes it to a next level, uh, and you can, you can sense it in his being. He came here and he's, you know, it's my honor and privilege to serve this country. He has given me an opportunity to do something different from where I was. Individuals that are surrounded by him can see that drive and desire, and sometimes then they step back and think, are the challenges that we're going through in our life comparable? When you have this young man who is coming here and had to do an extra um, uh, step or two to become a citizen, uh, and then to see his drive and desire to become an active, full-fledged member of the Air Force, an AE system. It's, it's like some, something in our culture we don't like. To, we always say, like, we don't sleep. If you, have a debt, if you are in debt, you're not supposed to sleep until you, uh, you pay back that, that debt. So I felt like I need to pay back something. So I thought uh, winning the uniform and serving in the United States in the Air Force would be like the, the little I can pay back for the country who helped me a lot and supported me in everything and every step and allowed me to come here even. For the 908 Airlift Wing, I'm Senior Airman Austin Jackson, Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama.